in Ephesians. This is where we'll finish up. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 14. I like this wording here. He says, For you were once darkness. Right? And there are passages in the, in the Bible that say we were in darkness. But the wording here is peculiar to me. He says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light. He doesn't just say you are in the light. He says you are light. And Jesus, in two places, is very funny. He says, I am the light of the world. And then what did he say to the apostles? You are the light of the world. Paul confirms it in Acts chapter 13. He says that his preaching to the Gentiles was a fulfillment of Christ saying, I've sent you to be a light to the nations in Isaiah chapter 49. I've sent you to be a light of the nations. In other words, because Christ dwells in us, when we preach the gospel, we are the light to the world. That's why he said, he that believes on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water in John chapter 7. And that water cleanses those people whom God chooses to save. And he opens up their eyes. That's what the living waters do. And all we can do is just sit here and say, wow, God, thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for sending someone my way to tell me about the good news of Jesus. So he says, you were once in darkness, but now are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So there it is. He says, you're light. You are light. Now walk like it. Walk. In, in other words, we, the Bible, did you know the Bible says our citizenship is in heaven? We are citizens of heaven. Did you know that? We are citizens of heaven. And so he says, walk like it. Walk like it. And how do you walk like it? It's the goodness. It's that grace. It's that kindness. It's that love. It's that restoration. It's that comforting of God's people. So he says, walk that way for the fruit of the Spirit. There it is. Ephesians. For the fruit, singular, of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That is the fruit. He's describing what you are in Christ. You have that. And now he's saying, walk like that light. The, the, he's, he looks at you as good. He looks at you as filled with the Spirit. He looks at you as, as, as filled with joy and peace. And now he says, I want you to walk like it. Proving what is acceptable to the Lord. And let's continue. Watch this. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Works. You see that? There's that word. He's saying, I don't want you to be caught up in the self-righteousness of all, all the Pharisees. I don't want you to be caught up in the self-righteousness of those who are trying to combine works with the cross. He says, no, I don't want you to even fellowship with it. And that's pretty hardcore. That's hardcore. It's Jesus saying, I don't want you to hang out with those people who are trying to teach you that Jesus is not necessary, but that you have to trust in your own righteousness in order to be acceptable before God. That's hardcore. He says, but rather reprove them. In other words, he says, expose it. Show it for what it is. Reveal it. Show the difference between works-based salvation versus Christ-based salvation. Works-based salvation results in all of us being fake and all of us fearing each other. I can't even share. I can't even tell you the struggles that I'm going with. Why? Because I fear you because we're all trusting in self-righteousness. You see, that's what works creates. If you believe you're saved by your works, then naturally you're going to judge others by their works. And if you blow it, you know that if you share with them, they're going to think you're not saved because you're trying to work your way there. And you all agree on this one thing, but everybody's blowing it in their hearts, but no one wants to tell them the truth. No one wants to be honest. What a drag. What a life of a facade. That is a shame that I would have to fear my brother or sister in Christ. I'm glad I can go to them and just tell them, man, this is who I am. I struggle with these areas. And not have to worry about them gossiping about me. And darn it, I don't want to gossip about them. He says, for it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. He says, outward, you're filled. Outward, you appear clean. But inwardly, in secret, you're filled with dead men's bones. You see, he's describing the self-righteous here. But all things are reproved and made manifest by the light. That's why Jesus said, he says, I have come as a light into the world. But men love darkness, that is, the deeds of the flesh, working, self-righteousness. They love darkness because their deeds, works, are evil. God looks at our good works as evil when they're done outside of Christ. So he says, they run from the light lest their deeds should be what? Exposed, reproved, same word. 
Jews hated Jesus Christ. Why? Because he said, all that stuff you're working for is garbage. And they're like, you're taking my religion away. You're taking my power. You're taking everything I have worked. And Jesus says, exactly. Everything you have worked for. I want you to trust in my work. He says, but all things are reproved, made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, sleeping ones, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. And that is what has happened with us. He caused us to come alive. Did you know that? Have you ever asked the question, what part did Lazarus play in coming out of the grave? You ever ask that question? That, that is an analogy. That is a type of what has happened with us. We weren't sitting there going, I'm dead. <laughs> Can you picture Lazarus? I mean, what, what? He's stinking. He's in the grave four days. The, that's what they said. He stinketh. <laughs> that's the old archaic King, King James. He stinketh. Right? You just don't picture you know, Lazarus in the grave going, Lord, come on, help me out. I really need help here. He, wasn't, he was dead. And the Bible says, you who are dead in trespasses and sins, has he made alive together with him and seated us in heavenly places with him. So that's what he calls light. Light is being forgiven of our sins. And he says, be that light to others. You are light. Now walk in that light. Okay? Let's pray.